so that was that's Pitcairn Island I'm going to turn around so you can see it behind me um, we've been at sea just an announcement on the shit tonight we've been at sea for four days uh, set sail from Tahiti which is about 2,000 kilometers to the west of here um, we tr we've just crossed the Tropic of Capricorn so Pitcairn itself is not in the tropics it's a subtropical island but as you'll see when we get closer, it's pretty lush palm trees, uh, very green, extremely mountainous. I believe there's a, one single beach on Pitcairn and getting down to it is uh, described as a hairy experience. Um, so we're going to now, I think, pull into Bounty Bay, which is where the mutineers uh, managed to get onto the island, having escaped from Tahiti. How they found their way here, I do not know. center really of an absolutely enormous marine protected area which is essentially an, a marine nature reserve um, there's no fishing is allowed apart from the local people who can take subsistence fishing uh, that means vessels from the high seas can't come in can't take fish um, it's a haven for marine wildlife of all kinds cetaceans turtles sharks fish coral uh, and now I'm just going to sit and watch as we and film a bit as we go into Bounty Bay, drop anchor and, uh, and go ashore. It has to be about half a mile from shore at this point. I will. Uh, Turn the camera around so you can see. I just want to tell you, show you how blue the sea is. The sea is insanely blue. cave where Fletcher Christian, the lead mutineer from the bounty, was said to have gone to hide out when things all went terribly wrong between the mutineers on the periphery of nowhere. So I'm halfway up the eco trail towards Christian's cave and I'm overlooking the Pacific Ocean. Um, if you look over to the right, there's the HMS Tamar, which is the Royal Navy ship that I came uh, to Pitcairn on. And I believe that the water there is about 80 or 90 meters. And yet when you're on that boat, you can still see the bottom of the sea. That's how incredibly clear the water is, how incredibly unpolluted. Um, it's a fabulous spot and as we look out over this sort of endless stretch of Pacific, South Pacific Ocean towards the horizon, this is all marine protected area. This is now a strict no-take zone. Uh, nobody's allowed to fish in these waters apart from the native Pitcairnians um, and they can do it for um, subsistence. Um, and I've been eating the fish and it's great. Um, but you know, this is a, 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 an absolute paragon of, of an MPA marine protected area. Um, it's patrolled by uh, satellites, um, which look out for the transponders of fishing vessels coming in from international waters. Uh, they believe that this is working very well. They have no um, recorded instances of illegal fishing within the MPA since it was set up in 2016. The penalties are, incredibly severe for shipping uh, for fishing inside an, an MPA uh, the ship itself could be seized uh, the fines can stretch into the millions of dollars it simply isn't worth uh, the while of, uh, of a vessel from outside of these waters to go in and fish and in any case MPAs are well known to be extremely good at providing fish 
uh, for outside the MPA. Fish don't know where the MPA begins and ends, and they breed prolifically inside the MPA because nobody's taking them. Um, and the, uh, a lot of the fish end up outside the MPA, and it's, it's a win-win. The fish win, well, not the ones that get caught, um, and the, the fishing vessels win. So the MPA is almost like a, it's a nursery for, uh, for fish. Uh, an incredibly prolific one as well. All of this MPA here, which is three or four times the size of the UK main, counts towards the UK's commitment to protecting 30% of the surface of the sea and 30% of the surface of the land by 2030, which was enshrined in the recent biodiversity treaty that was signed in, uh, in, in Montreal uh, last year.